Hey guys, today we're playing with Ninja Tech Cheetah. Let me tell you how it works. Hey guys, it's Paul and let's talk about Ninja Tech Cheetah. Now, this is a flexible filament and the reason I am using this is because Part of the BB-8 build, the dome drive uh, has a setup where uh, we have uh, rubber tires that essentially uh, inside BB-8's head that roll across the top of the ball. And, uh, and with Carey's drive system, uh, he graciously included uh, the files to print these. And in order to make use of them, you need to use some sort of either semi-flex or uh, flexible filament uh, in order to uh, print them out successfully. And in my research, I came across Cheetah, and it's a little bit harder than the regular you know, Ninja Flex, which has been very popular for a lot of things. But the appeal is, is this stuff is a little bit stiffer, so it's a little bit friendlier for the uh, Bowden drive setup, you know, uh, for the feed system that uh, the Ultimaker has. And uh, the other thing is, is that uh, in the advertising on their website at uh, ninjatech.com, uh, you can see that uh, it's supposed to be very printable. Uh, it's supposed to have similar print qualities as, say, ABS and PLA. So it's uh, a little bit easier to work with. And it, and it certainly has been the case for me. Uh, I've had a good time using this stuff. As far as the pricing of this stuff, I can tell you that for my purposes, I was able to buy one of the uh, uh, small sample spools. Uh, they have a link from their website to, I think it's uh, 3dprintnewyork.com. And uh, for $9.99, you can get one of the small, you know, little little rolls like this. And I went with a three pack because I wanted to try, uh, this is the red one, I have white, and uh, I've also used black, which is uh, printed these black tires. Pardon my messy desk, you can see I'm kind of a crazy scientist at work here. Uh, I got stuff everywhere. But getting back to Cheetah, the uh, process of getting this stuff to work in the printer uh, was a little bit of education on my part, which is, <laughs> Come on, that's normal, right? Uh, I uh, did a little bit of searching on the Ultimaker forum and got a couple of really good tips. And what I wanted to do is share them with you in this video. Now, one of the things that was recommended, because this stuff can sometimes cause some friction in the Bowden tube, is they mentioned taking the, uh, the light sewing machine oil and putting a drop of that on the filament so that as it passes through the Bowden tube, uh, it pr provides a little bit of lubrication. and. Uh, uh, there should be no problems with that, uh, you know, for anything else after. It should just evaporate. So I did that, and it worked really, really well. The only spots where I kind of got in a little bit of trouble is, uh, well, let me demonstrate. <laughs> uh, first, uh, one of the first spots I had trouble with is I had where uh, the edges kind of peeled up on the side here like this. And what was happening is I was uh, uh, printing way too fast. Um, the, one of the suggestions that was recommended was printing at 45 millimeters a second. Now, if I was printing something like, you know, a part like this, what have you, uh, maybe that would work. But for a really tiny part like this, uh, it, it turned out that slowing, going really, really slow, uh, really, really helped. Uh, so for these guys, for printing the tires out, I was printing these at a 0 0.1 uh, millimeter layer. And for a print speed, I decided to go down to 10 millimeters a second. That worked very, very well. Uh, also knocked down the travel speed to 120 millimeters a second. And I left combing on. And the fan speed, they recommend the fans to 50%. And uh, retraction was disabled because you just don't need it for this. And uh, further than that, as far as the uh, printer settings itself, uh, they recommended 222, I think was the magic number for me. 235 is what worked. Uh, for a build plate, they say on the website that you don't need one. You could use painter's tape or you know what have you. So you should be able to technically print this right on glass. Uh, I have the dried up, uh, I've got the diluted wood glue that's been dried on the bed. Uh, that's worked for a lot of my prints, so that's what I stuck with. No pun intended. See what I did there? Uh, so what I did is uh, I left the bed at 45 degrees Celsius just, uh, you know, I didn't want to go as high as PLA using 60, but I figured 45 would be uh, something good in between. The other thing, whenever I have a new filament, I'm one of those people where I'm always using the digital calipers to measure it up just to make sure. And I found with this filament, 
it wasn't quite at 2.84 or 2.85, it was on the higher side. It was 2.87, uh, 2.88. So what I did is in the uh, settings in Kira, I made the material diameter 2.9. Uh, and then someone had mentioned upping the flow a little bit from 100% to 103. I thought I'd try that and, and that actually worked very, very well. So having said that, using those settings, uh, I was able to print a bunch of these guys out. Now. If you're a fellow BB-8 builder and you're going to be going down this path again, uh, like I have, as far as you know, printing out some uh, semi-flexible filaments and printing these tires out, if you're wondering how much filament you need to print just three or whatever, one spool would be just, just fine. Uh, I, I had uh, plenty of leftover. Actually, I think I did about nine tires when I was all said and done. Uh, I had this much left at the end. I probably could have printed one more out, but I, you know, why tempt fate, right? So that worked pretty well. Uh, as for this, I mean, you can see where it's, it's pretty darn stretchy. Um, again, what this is known for, and they mentioned on the website, is they use this for plugs and, and those kind of things. Uh, so it's definitely got a hardness factor to it. It's very impact resistant. Uh, of course, if I printed this out of Semiflex or, or Ninja Tech, it would be way squishier. And maybe that would have been better in hindsight. But uh, it, it definitely is, uh, it's an impressive material. I, I was surprised how much fun I had uh, printing this out and seeing the results uh, after. Uh, oh, and the other thing, uh, as far as these guys go, um, and if you're wondering uh, why they look so stiff, um, they're 100% infill. So uh, I didn't uh, mess around with that. I followed uh, Carrie's instructions uh, with the BBA Builders Club uh, to the spec for the tire should be. Having said that, let me show you a time lapse of the black tire that I did being printed out. And you can see at the very end, it comes flying off the bed. I hope you enjoyed that time lapse and seeing my uh, print job uh, almost go flying off the bed. Uh, I was uh, looking around and uh, I, I think there's a, a couple other filaments that are very similar uh, to this. I think TPE, Ultimaker makes them as well too. Um, looking around or if you were looking for a full-size spool of this stuff, I want to say the pricing I saw was between uh, I, I think I was just looking on the Matter Hackers a little while ago. I thought it was uh, either 65, 68 bucks or stuff. But uh, I, I didn't buy a full size roll because I just don't have a need for that bunch of filament. But uh, overall, like I said, I've been really happy with the stuff. It worked out really well. And uh, uh, I'm going to have a good time trying to get the uh, hubs to fit around that, uh, <laughs> that wheel. But uh, so be it. But. Until next time, I just wanted to say this is where Nerdy is cool. The next time you come across here, we'll hopefully we'll have a review on the Creality CR10. And I'm still working on the Fullertech FT5, so uh, I'll have some comments and updates about that uh, very soon as well too. Thanks for watching, guys.